being grateful and thankful is a really, really big deal. And, and some people think like, well, if my life was better, <laughs> I'd be more thankful. <laughs> you know, if things were going right, I'd be more grateful about it. If things were going better, I would respond with more gratitude and thankfulness. Well, what if I told you that it's actually choosing gratitude and thankfulness that leads you to being happy, being content, be, having that attitude you want to have, having that satisfaction on the inside is not a result of good things happening to you. It's a result of your choice to be thankful and grateful in the midst of hard times. I'm going to tell you again this scripture that I, I sang at you earlier. First Thessalonians 5.18 is be thankful in all circumstances. Be thankful. These two words, can we say them together? In all in all, say it again, nice and strong, in all. You don't have to be told to be thankful in good circumstances. Dang. You don't have to be told to be grateful and thankful in, in, in hard times, but you do have to be told to be grateful and thankful during tough times. He said, be grateful, and he said, be thankful in all circumstances, because why? It's God's will for you. It's God's will for you. Being grateful and thankful, write this in your notes, is a choice. It's a choice, not a result. It's a choice. I'm going to say that like a hundred times over the next month. It's a choice. It's your choice to be thankful and grateful, and that's walking in God's will for you. Well, the next natural question, well, what if I don't feel grateful? You know, what if I don't feel like it? What, what if I'm, am I supposed to fake it? Pastor's telling me I need to put a fake smile on, show up to church, and just go, mm-hmm, everything sounds good. no. No, I'm not telling you to pretend. I'm not telling you to put a fake smile on. No, this is a challenge we all face. This is a challenge we all face. We know we're supposed to be grateful and thankful and cheerful, but we don't always feel like it, okay? I hadn't gotten around to it, okay? I'm, I'm not there yet. I don't feel it. It's not from, so I need, to be, I need to be honest, you know? I'm feeling bad. No, well... Hang on, we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about what the truth really is today. I don't care if you're preschool, high school, doctor, dentist, or fireman. This is something we all deal with. We all deal with this. The choice to be grateful and th keeping your chin up is a challenge. No amens? No, I, I know who you are. I, I know. I, you don't have to say amen. It's just like the bummer stuff. I don't want to say amen to it. It's okay. It's okay. Sometimes we just can't see all the things going right in our lives uh, people need to be told 10 good things for every bad thing. How does that saying go? Does anybody know it? It's like 100 good things? I don't know. I couldn't, I Googled it. I couldn't find it. If you find it, you can tell me. I just didn't want to waste my time looking for it. It's something like that. You got to be told however many good things because one bad thing will totally, de isn't it true, everybody? It is true. I'll think, I, if I'm told one bad thing about the message today, so I'm just warning you. <laughs> I will think about it all day. And it's, it's, it's not like I'm, you know, fishing for a compliment. It's just the reality we all live in. The same would happen to you. The same thing happens to you. One bad thing happens at work, and you're like, oh, man, that thing. You could have all these good things going right, everything going good, but that one person, like, cusses at you, and you're like, lucky I'm a Christian. Ugh, you're so mad right now. Sometimes it's just hard to see past the, the bad stuff. It's hard to see past the discouragement. It's hard to see past my challenges. Why? Because we tend to focus on our problems. And that's the big problem for today. The, the, our biggest problem is, is we focus on our problems. The problem is we focus on our problems. I thought that, I thought that was cuter in my, in my head, but I have a story about this. This happened to me very, very, very embarrassingly recently. This week, this week. I have a coach and a mentor and a pastor. I actually have several uh, mentors and coaches and pastors, it's part of my, it's just a part of my lifestyle as I've always been that way. Even before I was a pastor, before I got saved, when I was in my addiction and, and the, the, that whole lifestyle, I always gravitated towards people who were um, bigger and better. And I would, and I always had a way of like drawing them into my life. And so now is no different. I'm like drawn on great pastors, great leaders. And it's like the one thing that I really feel like other than God's call have going for me is these, these coaches, these mentors, these pastors that are like bringing, up, bringing us up, Tiffany and I, and helping us and guiding us. And, and I'm on a Zoom meeting this last week. I think it was Tuesday. I, was it Tuesday? I don't know. I can't remember. See, stuff you should write down. It was one of those days last week and I'm on a Zoom call with him and Tiffany's there and we're, we're hanging out and he's like, hey man, how's it going? And I'm, and I'm writing this message about gratitude. He said, how are things going? Well, you know, 
got a lot of problems right now. Got a lot of problem challenges. You know, I got some concerns I'm dealing with, some hardships. Oh, I got a lot of difficulties and troubles. And he's looking at me through the Zoom like, bro, would you lighten up? I think he actually said something along the like, dude, would you chill? Like, pause. And I, I was so embarrassed because then he starts reciting all, and he knows our whole lives. He knows what's going on in our family. He knows what's going on in the church. He's like, look at this and that and this and that. He's like, dude, I got the numbers, dude. You, you don't have any reason, dude, to be all whatever you're doing right now. Dude, get over it. I love people like that, too, that help me out, help me see. And I felt embarrassed. I was like, oh, man, I'm writing a message about this. About to tell my whole church, hey, guys, choose gratitude. But, but we all need a reminder, don't we? Sometimes we need the reminder. We've got to choose this, in, especially when things are tough, especially when things are down. We all do this. Our problem is, is we focus on our problems, and we look right past all the good things happening, and we need to fix. And it's true. We need to fix the things that are broken. Like, it's not bad to, to notice you have a problem, to notice you have a concern, to notice you need to do something different, but it's like, if you're anything like me, you spend way too much time thinking about what the problem is instead of looking at what all the good things that are going on. We need to learn to look. It's not contentment that brings gratitude. It's gratitude that brings contentment. Oh, it's, uh, I don't know who said it. It, it wasn't me first. I like found it somewhere. Maybe, I, maybe it was me. Maybe I did say it first. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's not contentment that brings gratitude. It's gratitude that brings contentment. Ah, I hope somebody gets that today. We need to learn to look for what God is doing, what he wants to do, what he's already done, what he's provided, what he has in store for us. That's what God told the prophet Elijah to do. Elijah. Elijah, not to be confused with Elisha, who we will also talk about today. Super confusing. But it's not a big deal. All right, I'm going to walk you through. It's going to be great. Elijah, this is found in 1 Kings 18. I actually brought my paper Bible with me today. Somebody's excited about that. I know that. Like, I like it when my pastor reads out of a paper Bible, even though it's no different than the screen, but it's like, it's, it hits different. That's my young, that's my young person way to talk. Uh, First Kings 18. First Kings 18 is where we find like a lot of these stories about Elijah. Elijah was pretty crazy. Um, he raised the boy from the dead. Okay. He made one meal, feed a whole family for many, many days. And then uh, because there was this famine going on that he caused, all right, he was a pretty crazy guy. He was a pretty crazy guy, and he was um, party to a lot of crazy stuff, not the least of which was he confronted all the prophets of Baal. And this is right in 1 Kings 18. You can read this story. It's absolutely hilarious, by the way. I think it's funny. I think it's super funny because he's like making fun of them. He's like, where'd you gods go, huh? Huh, what are they doing right now? Huh, they must be busy. He's like so salty with them. I love it. I love it. He beats all these prophets of Baal in an epic showdown. But one other thing he did in that season was he, he, um, he caused that drought, but then he ended that drought, all right? It was like this thing. He, he brought it on from the Lord, but then he also brought it up. He, it was a very unhappy time for all the people. I mean, think about it. A drought back then was like people died. They die. If it didn't rain for a couple years, we would figure it out. There's refrigerators. There's a way to get water with technology. There's all kinds of, but back then, no rain means no crop this year and y'all just figure it out. It was a huge deal for there not to be any rain, for there to be a drought. And maybe you can relate to that. It's like a dry season. It's a, it's a dry time. Things are not super easy for you right now. You're going through a challenge. You're going through a hardship. That's exactly what everybody else was going through during this, as we're going to read this story right here, 1 Kings 18. 1 Kings 18, starting in verse 43, he told his servant to go out and look. He said, go and look out towards the sea. This is Elijah speaking to his servant. The servant went out and looked and then returned to Elijah. He said, I don't see anything. I don't see what you're trying to show me. Oh, go look for the good. I don't see it. I don't see it. Seven times Elijah told him to go look. Pause right there. Seven times. It's like that obnoxious preacher. Go to just count your blessings. Just go look for the good. Go look for the good. I don't see it. I don't see the good things. Well, go look again. Well, I don't see the good things in my life. Go look again. I don't see all the, the positives that I'm supposed to see in my life right now. Go look again. 
man, I, I'm, I'm, the pastor's telling me to be grateful and thankful, but my neck hurts, my back hurts, my knee hurts, I've got no money in the bank, bills are piling up, all my friends are married, and I just got friend zoned by my best prospects. <laughs> and my pastor's like, look for the good. Uh, I want to slap him. You know, that's exactly what's going on here. He's telling his servant, go look, go look, go look. And the servant's like, bro, bro, I don't see anything. It goes on. It goes on. Finally, the seventh time. You got to keep looking sometimes. The servant told him, I saw a little cloud about the size of a man's hand rising from the sea. Then Elijah shouted, hurry to Ahab and tell him, climb into your chariot and go back home. Because if you don't hurry, the rain that they hadn't seen in years is going to flood you out. It's going to stop you. You won't even be able to move. It's going to rain so hard. A little cloud, size of a man's hand. Just this just a little baby cloud. Just a little baby cloud. Just a little good thing. Just a little tiny good thing. He said, look at that. Oh, I told you. He got all excited about it. And that's our issue. That's our issue as well. In dry times, God is bringing rain. He's bringing provision. He's bringing blessing. He's bringing hope. He's bringing healing. He's bringing all these things to your life, to your family, to your career. And like Elijah, I'm asking you to see it. Go look again. Go look. You have got to learn to look over and over again because that hand of blessing is coming your way. It is. If we, we need to look for it, though. It's important for us to look for it. But why? Why do we need to look for it? Why wouldn't he just tell the servant? Why, why wouldn't he just do it himself right there? Why wouldn't he just do it? Why would he tell the servant? Uh, why would he tell his servant to go look for it when he could have just done it? Well, over and over again in the Bible, we are told to have something called faith <laughs> and to see the things that God wants us to do. Because throughout the Bible, where we're called to have this faith, he wants us to go and look and see the good that he is doing and that he is bringing. It's, that's part of the like, agreement. Is like, look, I'm bringing blessing, but I want you to see it. I want you to notice it. I want you to receive it. I want you to, number one, I want you to see the cloud, but I want you to get in that chariot too. <laughs> I want you to not only see it, but I want you to act on it. Well, what if we learn to see the good? And that's what, that's what today is all about. That's what today's message, sermon, whatever you want to call it, my little preach, it's all about. It's all about learning to see. Learning to see, because what you see is what you get. Classic name for a message, right? Classic name for a message. Not the first one to name a message that, but what you see truly is. What you learn to see. Mm, sometimes you got to look over and over and over again. But what you learn to see is what you get. But if we don't walk in it, if we don't walk the walk, well, God promises a lot of things to us. I don't know if you notice this in the Bible. He promises a lot of things to us, but most, if not all of them, are accompanied with action on our part. It's true. Let's take the, let's take the money one, for example. I promise to be a blessing to you if you'll be faithful to your finances. I, I promise that you will prosper and be blessed in the land if you obey all these things I've commanded you to do. It's like, if you notice all these promises, like back up one line and it's, if you do this, I will do that. That's the promise. If you do this, I will do that. He's telling us to go look. Look, be grateful in all circumstances. That's God's will for you. And he's going to show up. He's going he's to continue to flow out his blessing, his, his goodness on you. <clears throat> Later on, when Elijah hands the, 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 the prophet mantle over, I mean, this is just over and over again. What God, God wants us to see and walk in everything he says. Write that in your notes, in fact. God wants us to see and walk in everything that he has for us. These promises, man, it's so important. It's so important for us not only to see, but also to walk. Also to walk. Later on, so Elisha. Let's get to Elisha. Elisha's pretty cool. He's a cool guy, too. He actually did more, more big miracles than Elijah did, but that's not what the message is about. He's pretty cool, though. He, he's like a younger guy, and he, like, chased Elijah around, and, and then Elijah got swept up into heaven, and Elisha took over and did, uh, and did really good. But in this moment that we're going to jump to, 2 Kings 6, if you got your paper Bible with you, I'm actually going to flip over to it right now. Uh, 2 Kings chapter 6, Elisha is kind of in a predicament. All right, him and his, his assistant, his servant, they're in this little tent situation. They're in like this little, um, maybe it's like a bigger kind of tent, not like a teepee tent, but like maybe a bigger tent. And they're, they're just sitting there, they're kind of hanging out, and their problems are all around them. They've got so many problems, they've got so many things going on, and this is not like they have bills to pay. This is not like Elisha's wife is mad at him. This is not like that. This is like an army 
of chariots and horses and spears and they're beating the war drum, bong, bong. Think of like Lord of the Rings. Orcs are after them, no orcs, there's no orcs. It's just, they have a war, uh, 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 army bearing down on them. They are about to literally die. Not something that we face very often, but uh, it's a challenge nonetheless, okay? I've actually, I debated, should I even bring that up? I actually have been in terrible situations where my life was before my eyes. And that's the, that's the situation Elisha was in, is like, it was spear to their neck. It was like right there. And the only way to like really kind of be in the predicament they were in is if you had a gun to your head or a knife to your throat. And it's like, okay, now what do I do? Now what do I do? This is huge. And so I'm trying to paint that picture is that they were, they were face to face with death. And in 2 Kings chapter 6, starting in verse 15, um, because they were surrounded, and, and it's the same kind of situation. It, he was telling his servant, go out and look. When the servant of the man of God got up early the next morning, went outside, there were troops, horses, chariots everywhere. Oh, sir, what are we going to do now? The young man cried to Elijah. Don't be afraid, Elijah told him, for there are more on our side than there are on theirs. Pause right there. No, there's not. No, there's not. No, there's not. Open the door. Look outside. The water is up to your, it's like if it's flooding, it's right there. No, it's not. It's not there's not more on our side. There is more. I'm going to count. There's one, two, three, four on our side. And then all y'all are all around me on this. No, there's not more on our side. You're, you're crazy. You're crazy, Elisha. What are you talking about? Goes on to say this. Verse 17. Then Elisha prayed. Here we go. Oh, Lord, open his eyes. Let him see. The Lord opened the young man's eyes, and when he looked up, he saw that the hillside around Elisha was filled with horses and chariots of fire. (laughs) I like that. I kind of like that story. It's like kind of exciting to me. But the point is, when we open our eyes to see what God is really doing, it can change our behavior pretty quickly. If we can learn to see all the good things God is trying to do, the, the way that he's protected us, the way that he's consistently there for us, the way that he wants to show up in your life. When we, when we learn to see it, when we learn to open our, our spiritual eyes, the eyes of our heart, some songs say, when we learn to see that, it changes everything. I've told, I've told you two examples of hundreds that the first thing that we see is not always what God wants you to focus on. The first thing that you see is not always what God wants you to focus on. And here's the truth. I want you to walk out of here believing what you focus on gets bigger. Now I shouldn't have to, I shouldn't really have to teach much on this. You all understand what this is like. What you focus on gets bigger and that applies to your blessings or your problems or both. Sometimes what you focus on gets bigger. Uh, You can choose to focus on your problems, which is what most people do. That's normal. Or you can choose to be not normal and choose to focus on your blessings and choose to focus on and what you choose to focus on gets bigger becomes more noticeable it stands out when you're shopping for red teslas what do you see all over town you already know you already know what i'm talking about if you're thinking about a new haircut man i think i'm gonna do the the little fade with the front flip and then you're like i didn't know 20 dudes at the gym have the same haircut as soon as you start thinking about a new thing i'm gonna get this this nice little dress right here this right and then you look like what the heck how did she get that As soon as you start paying attention to something, it gets more noticeable. You start thinking about wanting a baby, and then you're like in the grocery store, you just get run over by strollers. (laughs) You start, as soon as you start, like there's something called baby fever. I don't know. I shouldn't know, but it is. It's like as soon as you start thinking about whatever, whatever you focus on, it's kind of silly. It's kind of funny, but it's also true about your blessings. It's also true about being grateful and thankful. It's also true about your problems. When you focus on those, it's like, oh, I'm wore down. I'm wore out. Oh, my problems are so big. Because that's all you focus on. Not you. The person next to you. Not you. <laughs> Not you. What if we start looking for wins every day? What if we start looking for what to be grateful for every day? You had to come all the way to church to be told to count your blessings. <laughs> This is a classic message, isn't it? But it really, I mean, come on, let's do this. I, I, it's so frequent that we need to be reminded that if, we're, if we just learn to count those wins, count those gratitudes, and count the things that we had to be thankful for, you'll begin to see more of them. And what you look for most is what you see the most profound. It's absolutely crazy. What you zero in on makes everything else non-existent. I got one of these, and it just kind of shows, like, if I, if I was to try and look at one verse in this little magnifying light. I'm like, one verse, I don't see any 
other thing. It's just so zeroed in. I can't see anything else. I could like my kids play with these little toys right here and they're right here and I could be standing right over them. They don't even know I'm there. I'm like playing tricks on them, messing with them and they're like down here and I got them right where I want them because they're fixated on their problems. That preaches a little bit. <laughs> we, 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 do this with our, we do this with our spouse sometimes. Uh-oh, I'm about to call you out like crazy. You never rinse your dishes. Ugh. Man, why do you always have to be told to take the garbage out? Man, you take so long to get ready. Do not say amen. Do not say amen. But when you were dating, it was more like, girl, look at you. I'm telling you what, you look, man, I can see you coming. I can see all of her qualities. You know what I'm saying? All of those qualities, they look so good. I can definitely see you coming, and it doesn't bother me to watch you leave, baby girl. I can see everything. I'm telling you, it's like, what, what changed? What changed? Did, did that much really change or is just what you're focused on changed and now you're, you get, instead of, be, instead of being right here, girl, you, man, I just love, look at how joyful you are. Look at how funny you are and I like the way you do that. And then it's like, why do you chew with your mouth open? Gosh, man, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, it's like we do this at work. We started out with, oh, this job's going to be so awesome. I got more money now. My schedule's so good now. My boss sucks. My coworkers are lame. Oh, I deserve better. Like, what happened? You were doing so good. And now all you do is focus on everything bad going wrong all the time. When just one short year ago, two short, you loved it. You were so thankful for it. Are you seeing this yet? Uh, we do this uh, with our kids Oh, I just can't wait to have baby. Oh, baby, baby. So baby, baby. I love you, baby. You're so cute. Now it's like, what? you don't call me bro, bro. I'm telling you what's up. They turn into teenagers like, can I send them back? What's up? Can I take you back to where I got you? This is crazy. I'm done with it. I'm done with it. Only parents of teenagers are going to laugh at that one. Just give it time. Give it time, everybody. You'll get there. You'll get there. I believe in you. We do this with church. We do this with church. Oh, it's so friendly. Oh my gosh, they're so welcoming. Oh, it's like, oh, the worship is so good. And now it's like, it's too loud. It's too big. It's too small. The pastor's not funny. Pants are too tight. Like, whatever it is. Amen. But at least I'm funny. <laughs> I've lost a lot of weight lately, okay? <laughs> Trying my best. We get stuck with this. We get stuck with this in hand and we're fixated on all of our problems all the times. It's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. We look ridiculous doing it. We're telling all of our friends, oh, my problems, all my problems, when really God is calling, look out over the sea. Look again, look again, look again. There's, there is something out there for you. It's so good. There's so much blessing. The rain is about to come and it's gonna drown you. In blessing. He, God wants us to look for the good. He doesn't want us to zero in on the bad. He doesn't want us to zero in on everything that annoys us, that's frustrating with us. I mean, I'm not saying to pretend. I'm saying, why don't we tur turn our focus, if what we focus on gets bigger, why don't we focus on what's good? Amen. It's our choice. We get to choose what we focus on. And if I, if I sat down with you for coffee for any length of time, I know I could draw out like at least five good things about your life. Did you sleep in a bed last night? Yeah. Hmm? Homeless on the street? Well, at least you had some food. Amen. Amen. Didn't have any food? Well, uh, aren't you glad the human body takes 40 days before you're even starting to feel that? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's ridiculous. Everybody's got something. Everybody's got something. I got one, I got one little little thing I want you to do. It's just one application step, if you can handle this. Just keep a gratitude journal. <laughs> I'm keeping it so basic right now. Pastor, be basic right now. Right now, this is basic, but this is, this is true. I had to do this. I had to start doing this because people don't know this about me. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm over-caffeinated. I'm really excited all the time. And I'm, you would think I'm always happy all the time, but I'm actually very critical. I have a tendency to be very critical. 
and I could walk away from church and be like, the slides didn't work, the TVs were flickering, this one was brighter than that one, and the mic wasn't right, and, and the kids are watching me from the back of the van like, what the heck, what's this guy talking about? And I get all twisted up. I don't know if anybody else does this, everybody else has this tendency, or maybe you don't know it, but we have a tendency to focus on problems, and a way to combat that is to count your blessings, write them down. This can be a Google Doc, this can be a diary, this can be a little notepad the size of your hand. One thing a day. You can do this today. You can do it right now while you're sitting here pretending to listen to me. You can write something down and say, um, whatever it is, just write it down. One thing a day. A week later, you'll have seven things. A month later, you'll have 30 things. And your heart will change. Your mindset will change. Keep a gratitude journal. Just write anything down in there. If you, you want to see mine? I actually brought a picture of mine. You can see mine. This is a picture of the, the, the journal that I use. It's like I am such a scientist. I don't know what my problem is, but I have to have a template. Okay, I have a template for my diary, but it, it's kind of small. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I did the best I could. On the very, very top, it says gratitude win. It's the first thing I write. Every single morning from the day before, I write something that was a celebration, something that was a win, something I have to be grateful for. And I don't ignore I don't ignore the bad things. It's all the way at the bottom, though. And I don't call them problems. I call them challenges and opportunities for improvement. Because the way that we phrase things change, changes our mindset. It changes the way we view problems. It's not a problem. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity for growth. It's an opportunity for change. And believe me, sometimes the bottom one is a paragraph and the top one is a word. <laughs> but the more you do this, the top line will get bigger. And the bottom line will be more productive it'll be more productive. Because what you focus on gets bigger. What you focus on gets bigger. Put that up on the screen for me. What you focus on gets bigger. And what you need to focus on is what you have to be grateful and thankful for. I don't need you to pretend that nothing bad ever happens to your life. I want you to see what God, that God has really blessed you, that he really loves you, he's cared for you, he provides for you. And I want you to name that stuff so that when there's a drought in your life, you don't die of thirst. I don't, want you to, I don't want you to be hurt like that. So what if we could bring ourselves to see God's blessing rather than our hardship? How would your life be different? It's easier than ever to focus on the bad news. Wars, rumors of wars, artificial intelligence is taking over the world. Oh my God, everything's over. It's going to be the end. Rising inflation, losing my job, whatever. It's easy to focus on that stuff. But what if we separated ourselves as followers of Jesus and separated our hearts from the negative and chose to look at the positive? I once heard a testimony from a man as we begin to close the, the message down. Um, I once heard a testimony of a man who had some real hardships in life. He had some real struggles all the way from birth that caused him a lot of pain and a lot of discouragement. But he had a choice to make early on he said, I'm going to let the bad stuff in my life, am I going to let the bad stuff in my life dictate my, my mindset, my attitude, or am I going to choose to see my life differently? And this person had major, major issues from birth. Or am I going to do something with what I've been given? Am I going to sit here and sulk in my situation, or am I going to grow? Am I going to, am I going to move forward? He found the Lord, this man, at age nine at age nine, because he was born with some defects. He was born with some things wrong with him. He read a story in John chapter nine, a story about the man born blind. And that ministered to him so much, he gave his life to the Lord. He gave his life to the Lord after reading John nine, at nine years old. <laughs> and he chose to look at his life the same way that that man born blind was. He, he, now, I once was blind, now I can see. He wasn't born blind, but he was born with some handicaps. And instead of focusing on what was wrong in his life, he chose to use the rest of his life for the good and to try and help others. Um, I have a picture of him doing what he does best. Um, this is a picture of him right here. Um, Nick Vujicic. No arms, no legs, born that way. His testimony is worth looking up. It's good. And uh, this, is a mess this is a picture of him giving his testimony to a church about gratitude and thankfulness. And you can look, I didn't find one. I couldn't find a picture of him crying. I couldn't find a picture of him. They're all of him. He's always smiling like that, always. It's unbelievable to me. It's unbelievable. 
I'm, 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 I'm speaking out to you. Jesus also chose to focus on the outcome rather than the obstacles, the good rather than the bad. Hebrews 12, 2 says, because of the joy awaiting him, talking about Jesus, he endured the cross, disregarding the shame. Now he's seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Jesus also had to do this too. He saw the, the cross in front of him, the problem, but he was able to look past it to the good thing, to the thing he had to be grateful for, which was our salvation. Jesus looked past his problem because he knew something better was on the other side. Today, I'm asking you to look past your hardships and choose, like Jesus, to see past your problems, to see past your pain. Choose gratitude. Choose thankfulness. Choose that. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes with me and give an opportunity to every person to just give their lives to Jesus, to just offer yourself to him. Offer yourself as a living sacrifice to say, you know what, I, I know I'm struggling with a lot right now. I know I'm struggling. I have a lot of challenges. I have a lot of hardships. But you know what? I'm going to do like Jesus, and I'm going to look past it. I'm going to look past it. I'm going to look at see to the good. I'm going to actually lift up my, my Savior, my Lord, and, and, and choose to focus on the good. And if there's anyone here that needs that, that needs that in their life, that needs a kind of fresh start, a new beginning, maybe you want to start your relationship with God over or for the very first time. If that's you today, would you just lift your hand up for me so I can see who I'm praying for? Amen. You are seen. Amen. You are seen. Is there anyone else that just wants to start a fresh relationship with God? Amen. I just love it. I absolutely love it. Church, let's pray together, can we? As a family, let's do this. Let's pray together. And, and so no one's praying alone today. Let's just pray it out loud. As I say it, you can say it after me. Say, Father God, I give you my heart. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on a cross for my sin. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and show me the path that I should take. Amen.